Well, hello and welcome back to a very special daily devotional because today is Good Friday, the first day of the Easter season, the beginning of the most amazing story in the history of the world. But it is a strange name, isn't it? Good Friday. And I remember as a small child thinking, but why is it good? Some really bad things happen on this day. Why would we call it good? And certainly, we are a little bit unique amongst the nations. The Germans, for instance, would call this Karfreitag, which means Morning Friday. The Danes would call it Langefrede, which means Long Friday. But we have been calling it Good Friday for centuries. And there's different theories as to why we call it Good Friday. And one of the main ones would be that it's a derivation of God's Friday. And that's certainly true in a sense, isn't it? But according to the Oxford English Dictionary, which is the most reliable source for these things, it actually stems back to the use of the word good to denote a day or sometimes a season that was devoted to religious practice, that was devoted to worshipping God. And because it's such an important day of the Easter feast, it was designated Good Friday because it was a day that was taken to ponder what Jesus did for us on the cross. So in a sense, it is a good day, not for what happened on that day, but for what came from what happened on that day. And of course, that's the Easter Sunday story. And we'll spend some time thinking about that in a couple of days time. But I'm interested in how Jesus approached the suffering that he knew he was about to go through. In Matthew chapter 26, verses 52 to 54, we come in on the back end of the episode on the Mount of Olives, in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Peter draws a sword and chops the ear off the servant of Caiaphas, the high priest. And Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its place, for all those who take up the sword shall perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then will scripture be fulfilled, which says that it must happen this way? So Jesus did not have to go through the cross. He chose to go through the cross because he knew that scripture required it. So having decided to walk through this ordeal, then it's interesting to read in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, that fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus endured the cross, not because it was a good experience, not because it was a pleasant thing, but for the joy set before him. He took joy from the future and used it to get through the present. He was able to endure the pain, the shame, the suffering, the agony, because he was fixated on the joy of what was going to happen because of his death and then his resurrection. Who knows, but maybe he was calling to mind Psalm 30 verse 5, and in the second half of it says, Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. It's part of the cycle of life, isn't it, that we have to endure times of sorrow, sadness and pain, but we can do that by fixing our eyes on what we know is coming that can give us joy. The hope of tomorrow will help us endure the pain of today. Now, praise the Lord, we're not being asked to hang on a cross and go through all of that suffering. But the truth is there are many things that are probably causing us pain. And Good Friday is a good time to think about that, not to wallow in it, but to start to deal with it. There can be the pain of the loss of a loved one. Maybe they've died or maybe we've been through a divorce or maybe our children are estranged from us. Maybe it's a dream that we've carried for so long that looks like it will never come to be a reality. Maybe it's financial difficulties. Maybe it's the loss of a relationship that was really important to us that has now become poisoned. There are many things that can cause us grief and pain. And in a way, we need to put them at the foot of the cross and hand them over to Jesus, don't we? But in the meantime, we have to endure those things. And if we can draw the joy from the future that we know is coming, it will help us endure those difficult times, won't it? 
And to think about, we should be joyful because we have eternal life. The debt that we'd racked up by our sinful behavior has been paid in full by somebody who had no need to do so, but did so because he loves us. And that we can live a quality of life, not just a length of life. Life with the Lord Jesus at the center of it is the fullest life that we could ever live. And that's ours by right as sons and daughters of the living God, isn't it? So let's take hold of the joy in the future and use it to enable us to walk through the pain and suffering of today. And bearing in mind that if this is Good Friday, in two days time, we're going to hear that joyful shout, aren't we? That he is risen. It is finished. God has done what he needed to do on the cross. And because of what he did, life is open to us. Life is possible for us. Relationship with God is possible for us. And that's what we're looking forward to, even as we meditate on the sadness of what happened on Good Friday.